Kevin Sidebottom here. I'm a speaker, author, and trainer, and I travel around and teach sales teams and leadership teams how to grow influence with their customers and those colleagues and how to drive influence home and build trust. Because when that happens, well, profits go up. You know, there's actually a correlation in when trust is high, cost is down and speed goes up. When that happens, profits increase. So it behooves us to make sure we're building trust in our workplace or our organization, whatever that is, to make sure we're constantly building trust. So in this video, we're going to go over the three questions that we have to answer, what we constantly need to be doing, something we need to do at least annually, and some supplemental stuff, and we need to do this effectively. And then I'm going to give you one other tidbit that's going to help you. The first three questions we have to answer on every interaction are, do I like you, do I trust you, and how can you help me? Yeah, that's right. If we want to build influence, we have to act like a salesperson and really make sure we're hitting those out of the park. We need to make sure that we're coming in without our Eeyore face on and being happy, joyful, helping people, and encouraging people. And I know it's hard. Some days I fail at it, but we got to hit the mark more days than not. So that way we're building trust. Okay? So we need to make sure that we're likable, that we're trustworthy, so we our actions need to, you know, match what we're saying, and we need to be helping people, help those around us. We need to be finding out what they need. Not just every little action or a task list that needs to be filled out. We need to be focused on people. We need to be intentionally learning about people. We need to be intentional here and value people here. So in sales, we actually use like a CRM, a customer relationship management tool. Okay? And just about every organization or workplace has that. Well, if you don't, pick one up. It doesn't have to be a Salesforce or HubSpot or whatnot. It can be a simple piece of paper that you have in a file cabinet. Remember those old things that, you know, if you lit on fire, burn down a whole building because there's so much paper in them? Use a piece of paper if you need to and just have a little detailed plan of what the person is, who they are, their birth dates, their family, their kids, stuff to just learn, not to leverage them like some organizations will say will happen, but to actually be intentional because you care. Now, organizations that have a great culture like Ramsey Solutions have their management know how their team members are doing. If they're actually going to be expecting a baby, they're there to cheer them on, and the team rallies around them and supports them. If someone lost somebody that's close to them, well, the teams help them as well. They flow together. They want to be intentionally learning about each other. And those are what successful organizations and workplaces do to do that. They actually are interested in people. They value the people. Now, the other thing I talked about doing is do an, a training once a year. And that can be anything. What's going to help your guys and your team grow? If it's in sales, you do sales training. If it's in a trust kind of environment for your team, Go and do some kind of training that's going to help you guys come together, build relationships. Okay, goes along with the last point I just talked about. You can even do those escape rooms together, and they're great team building environments where everybody's working together, joking, having a good time, and learning about each other. It's not just going out and having a beer with people but it's actually being intentional and you have time away from the office that you guys are growing together. Now, I, all, I, I recommend doing a kind of a training and it, it can be that kind of a training. It can be an operation adventure where you're doing tasks and putting each other in environments that is going to take trust. I mean, it's really like we used to bring when I was in college in operation adventure, we take organizations about 25 foot up in the air and they were all harnessed in, and they had to do obstacles together. I mean, we literally had like four foot eleven people that weighed about a hundred pounds up, leaning up against somebody who was like six foot five, two hundred and fifty, doing different kind of obstacles. 
and they had to trust each other to complete it, and they had to work together to complete it. Now, that's an extreme thing, which not everybody can do because you don't have those areas around that you can actually go and do those trainings, but you can actually do different trainings in different areas that aren't as aggressive. But I encourage you to invest in those trainings at least annually because it's going to benefit and it's going to bring people together. And that's what you need is to have a bond because that way growth can happen, trust grows and cultivates, and you get more work done faster because everybody knows everybody. Okay. The other thing I talk about doing is supplementing books. I know that one just doesn't sound much fun, does it? But here's the deal. I read about 12 books a year by reading 10 pages a day. 10 pages a day times 30 days in a month. I can typically finish a 300-page business book in a month. You can too. Now, you don't have to do 12 books a year. Do one book a quarter. It's kind of supplemental to these trainings where everybody's learning because as people learn, they grow. And as they add comments and stuff, people gain insight from each other. They grow in their trust. So we got to be supplementing these things because we want to add value. So we want to build the relationships. We want to grow together. Now, here's the little tidbit that I often tell people. Most leadership teams and salespeople offer the moon to customers and their teams saying, here's where we're going and we're going to hit this mark and they fail. And the customers don't build trust with them. They go, well, great, you failed me. And we can't really recover sometimes. And animosity grows, trust goes down, profits go down. So we need to do something else. And it's called under committing over produce. What that means is we actually under commit. So if something's going to take us oh, say seven to 10 days to complete, we're going to bake in a couple extra days. That's what program managers do. They actually bake in a little bit of extra time so that way if something runs long, they're still on time. And when you typically do that and under commit and you actually hit that date or overachieve and hit the date before, great. Now you look like a rock star. So undercommit, overproduce. Always constantly be thinking of that. Now, don't sit there and go to the extreme where you're like, well, it's going to take me five days, but I'm going to throw in a 30-day window because that's not going to work either. Customers and team members have timetables. But if you bake in an extra day or so, typically you have a little bit of leverage. Okay? So take those things to heart. If you have any questions, reach out. I've got links to my site and how to contact me below. If you like this video and it's helpful, Hit like, subscribe, share it with somebody. Maybe to add value to them. That's what I'm here to do is help you grow. All right, we'll see you next time.